Well, I, I would say kind of my take on, okay, should kids, should they enter the family business if they feel a dissonance about the actual product or service or whatever the thing that's being produced is? So I think one of the things you said is oftentimes kids are raised and, and have a sort of a general set of skills and, and they can apply that to lots of different things. And so sometimes the who is a lot more important to a lot of people than the what. Like there's an obsession in our culture with the what. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do when you grow up? We don't ask who. Is who a more basic question to ask than what? And, and so I think for most people, the who is more important than the what. Like I don't really care. Like I've heard people say this a lot. I don't really care what I do. I care a lot about who I do it with. I mean, if I, if I, if I do that activity, if I join that corporation, I'm going to spend the, you know, the bulk of my life, people that I really am not connected with, that I don't have a deep relationship with. If I do this over here, I might be slightly less interested in the product, slightly less interested in the service, but I'm, I'm going to be surrounded 40, 50 hours a week by people I love. <laughs> like, and, and so that, that I think needs to be given a, a strong vote. However, I'd like to kind of caveat th that as well and say that one of the ways to resolve this problem, if your kids are totally not interested in the what that you do, is, is to understand that the family itself is like a holding company. It's not necessarily associated with a single. And so I, I'm very big into in Family Inc. when we're coaching families, talking to them about this. Like, hey, I want you to start three businesses. Start, start a service-based business, a scale business, and then start a legacy business. And a legacy business is oftentimes, you know, the, the different capital intensive assets, the investment thesis what wealthy families call a, fi a family office. You start to steward assets. That, that, that isn't, the what of that doesn't really matter. I mean, if you, if, you're, if you ask most kids who really understand stewardship, hey, I've got a fourplex that I wanna give you to steward. Would you like to have the $2,000 a month in free cash flow that comes from stewarding this asset? Most kids you know, who are 25 years old and been well-raised are probably not gonna say, you know what, dad? I don't really, that doesn't, you know, the whole property management thing isn't for me. You know, I really prefer to do this over here. It's like, don't you, it's, it's an asset. Like our, our family stewards assets. None of us cares particularly about like none of us, none of us were what wake up every morning and say, I just love property management. You know, I can't <laughs> wait for somebody to call me with their plumbing problems. Like, like that, that's not, that's not the proper like level of analysis for this conversation. And so. And so that, that a lot of this is just, there's an obsession in our culture with finding your identity through your work. And because we are obsessed with that, this starts to feel like some kind of violation of people's individual identity when a family owns anything that they, they are considering or passing on to their children. And this goes all the way back to, I think what Michael is saying in this clip, that really the problem is an identity problem. We're trying to decide here whether or not it's healthy for us to give kids a family identity or should we pour everything into their individual identity? And so if the bias is, no, we're, and this is, I think the best way I've ever heard this articulated is Naval Ravikant when he said, life is a single player game. You're born alone. You're going to live alone. You're going to die alone. Like that, that, that is, that is the mantra of, of liberalism, <laughs> according to what Michael Knowles is describing because I, and I, and I think that's fundamentally flawed and I love Naval and I agree with like 90% of what he says, but, but that, that one I find completely off base. You know, we, we are not playing a single player game. We're playing a family centered game. We are born into a family. We are designed to live our lives in and through and with our family. And if everything goes well, then God willing, we will die surrounded by our family. Like that's, we, that's the kind of creature we are. And, and I think liberalism has lied to us about the nature of this. And this is why we're struggling so much with these questions, because there, our primary lens through which we see all of these questions is, you know, is this going to help build up my kid's individual identity? And if we give them anything, if we give them identity, we tell them about this house that, you know, we, we are, it's a part of our family. If we have family land, if we, if we have a, fa a strong family last name, if we have a family crest, if, if there's a family trust fund that that helps us go on vacations together and, or have a family summit every year. All of that identity, all the stories, all the pictures, all of that is, is really grounding the individual into a family story. And it's all considered by many people. And really, I think by the philosophy of liberalism in general, 
as a violation of what is most sacred in our culture, that we worship this value of individuality, of individual self-expression, because we believe we're in a single player game. And so, so I, I, the last thing I want to say, and then I want to get your thoughts here, Riley, is, you know, part of what I believe about inheritance is that if you, if, if you give your children an inheritance and give them the philosophy of liberalism and individualism, you are hurting them. And I do think you probably should give them nothing because, because you're not giving them any real identity with that money. They're going to think the money exists only for their own comfort. It is going to suck all the motivation out of the system. And so I would say, yeah, don't give them anything. Give it all away. You know? And, and so, I, so I, I don't think this is a black and white answer. I think it depends on how you're raising your children. But if you're raising your kids to function as a team, if you're raising the bar as a father and casting a huge vision for your family, multi-generationally, if you really believe what Genesis 128 says, that the, the family is designed to be fruitful, multiply, fill, subdue, and rule, then who better to give that inheritance to than your children who have been raised to value those things? And now they're able to take the baton and like the Myron Golden Reel suggested, they're supposed to take the family farther. Right, they're, 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 the whole goal is that I want my ceiling to be my kid's floor. If that's what you believe, then of course an inheritance is, imp is important. And it's not just about finances, every single area. You wanna give your kids an inheritance when it comes to their network. You wanna give them an inheritance when it comes to their spiritual life. You wanna give them an inheritance with regards to land. You wanna give them inheritance with regards to wisdom. And, and so you, you just, you're constantly thinking, and, and a lot of this, this, this baton passing, I believe does happen in this, in this realm of time when your kids are in their twenties. Like, I think that's such a critical time frame for doing a lot of this work, because that's the time when many of our kids are beginning to, they really have an opportunity to just focus on like learning the most complex lessons of life. And, and so to, to live some kind of integrated lifestyle with their father, so they can learn that that's awesome. And, and so there's lots of ways we're trying to live that out, you know, because we have now, you know, three adult kids who are in their twenties. And so I'm trying to understand how to do this well. And I'm realizing again, like I'm mentioning that so much of the weight falls on the father, raising that bar and causing my kids to, to, to really understand that, like, I'm not, I'm not interested in giving you anything of our family if you're going to squander it. But I have spent the last 20 years raising you to be a good steward. And I trust you more than I trust anyone else. And so of course I'm going to give you that. And I'm going to be watching really carefully as like, how do you handle that? How do you handle that resource? How do you handle that resource? And so I've got my hand on the faucet and, and my goal and nothing would please me more than, you know, when I, when my kids turn 40, there's just, I, there's just nothing left uh, that I feel that would damage them. If I just turn the faucet all the way to 10 and say, please take everything and care for me and your mother. And we trust you. Like, that's where I want my kids to head ultimately.